You may have heard people making bold claims like you can get certified in cloud computing and you're going to be able to land a six-figure cloud computing job. And of course, it's not as easy as it sounds. There may have been a time when that was true, but now the industry has matured, times have changed, and employers are looking for something different. Cloud certifications alone are just not going to cut it. They're not your golden ticket. They're just part of what you need to do if you want to prepare yourself for those types of jobs. In this video, I'm going to explore what actually gets you hired today, what combination of technical skills, project work, and personal branding you need to be able to stand out and be employed today. My name's Neil Davis. I've worked in the tech industry for over 25 years, and through digital cloud training, I've trained over a million people worldwide in cloud computing. Now, let's be clear, certifications are still important. I think of them as a baseline, a sort of prerequisite, but not a differentiator. If you apply for a cloud job role without at least one certification, then you're probably not even going to make it to an interview because employers are just looking at that point to see you know, what your credentials are like on paper. And the problem is today, so many people have certifications. If you don't, then that kind of stands out. It doesn't go in your favor at all. So it is important to have certifications. It's important to be strategic and get the right certifications at the right level for the type of job you're doing. It's not important to collect lots of certifications. Some people go all in and that's all they do. They just focus on getting one after the other after the other. That's not necessarily the best use of your time either. Now, to get hired, you actually need to go beyond the certification. It really means following a structured training program, a pathway that gives you not just the certifications that you can show Show off, but also a portfolio of project work. So you've actually got some hands on skills. Ultimately, you need to be able to deliver solutions for companies. Now, if you do get into an interview, they may very well ask you to do technical tests. A lot of people who just chase certifications fail at this point. They're not able to actually prove hands on skills because all they understand is theory. So it's really important to be rounded with that practical experience as well as the theoretical knowledge as well. So let's look at what you should focus on in terms of the skills that you need. So starting is IT fundamentals. If you're not already in the tech industry, so if you're someone who's new to tech, then this is somewhere where you really need to focus time. If you've been working in the industry for many years and now you're just learning cloud skills, you probably already have this baseline. But make sure you understand compute, storage, databases, networking, virtualization technology containers. In the networking area especially, be good with things like IP addresses and subnets and subnet masks. That type of thing is something even people who've been in tech for years don't fully understand. Very important knowledge, and it's going to come through in interviews and technical tests. Linux as well. So a lot of people don't know Linux. They usually work with Windows or Mac, for example. But most systems in the cloud actually do run on the Linux operating system. Now, you don't need to be a Linux guru, and I don't recommend focusing on Linux certifications. I don't think it's a good use of your time. I think the cloud platform certifications, uh, certifications in Terraform or Kubernetes as well, those sorts of things are very useful. Linux itself, it's more just having an operational understanding being fluent in Linux. So knowing how to work around the command line, manage users, permissions, uh, services, the networking stack on Linux. Even if you end up working with AWS mostly, these are going to be very useful skills because a lot of services run on Linux in AWS. Next up is infrastructure as code. So learning tools like CloudFormation and HashiCorp Terraform. Modern infrastructure is mostly automated in terms of its deployment. So we're not clicking around in the console. We're using infrastructure as code tools like Terraform to deploy infrastructure. And this is used across lots of different job roles. So architects might use it. DevOps engineers will use it. Cloud engineers will use it. AI ML engineers will use it as well. So a very useful skill to have, even if you're going into one of those different pathways. Next would be CICD, so continuous integration and continuous delivery. This is more in the DevOps world. It's about how code moves through from development to production through the software development lifecycle. There's a lot of automation that happens there. So working with systems like Git and GitHub, AWS Code Pipeline, Code Build, and other tools from third parties as well. Now, this is a very, very useful skill if you're working in DevOps. It's absolutely essential. But even if you're working in other roles like solutions architects, because companies are deploying their code through this type of pipeline, it's going to be a very, very useful skill to have. 
Next up, we have containers and orchestration. So we're thinking Docker, the Elastic Container Service, or Kubernetes, or on AWS, the Elastic Kubernetes Service. So containers are really the sort of backbone of many modern applications. And Kubernetes knowledge will take you a very long way in DevOps, platform engineering, and cloud architecture. Now, in terms of cloud stiffications, so there are stiffications in Terraform, for example. That's useful. Kubernetes is useful for stiffications as well. So those skills are all useful across different job roles. Then you want to focus on cloud stiffications. Now, I recommend here getting to the associate level for most people. If you are a seasoned professional in the tech industry, you might go up to the professional or specialty level as well. So the stification, which is kind of like the de facto, if you like, for me, is the solutions architect associate. It doesn't mean you're going to become a solutions architect. It's just a nice broad stification that covers a lot of different topics and AWS services. So it's a very good stification to prove to employers you have a good understanding of AWS. If you are moving more into DevOps and development, then there's the developer associate and the DevOps engineer professional, for example. For artificial intelligence, there's the AI practitioner and the machine learning engineer associate. So we need to choose the right certification depending on the type of job role we're going for. The foundational level ones, that's the AI practitioner and the cloud practitioner, they're a good starting point. And I recommend that everybody learns AI to a certain level. So the AI practitioner is quite useful there. But the cloud practitioner especially is not really going to get you a job. So you do need to go beyond that to the associate level. So certifications, they prove some level of knowledge. Projects will then prove your ability, your hands-on capability. Employers don't just want to see that you pass the test by answering some multi-choice questions. They want to know that you can build things that work, that you can troubleshoot broken deployments and fix them. They want you to have actual hands-on skills, so you're not learning that on the job. If you follow just watching videos and learning online, for example, you might not build that skill set. So you need to go beyond that to impress employers today. What makes a real huge difference is if you've worked in collaborative real world projects to solve actual business problems and that you have some documentation around this. You've got some articles that you wrote and published on LinkedIn or Medium, for example, or you have some project work that you can showcase. So what sort of things? Well, maybe building a serverless web application with a back-end database, deploying a multi-tier system using Terraform and CICD, setting up monitoring and alerting for production workloads, those types of things, things that companies actually need you to do in the real world. Now, we actually have our own training program where we teach people these types of hands-on skills. It's called the Cloud Mastery Bootcamp. One of the things we do there, which is something I recommend everyone finds a way to do, even if you're not in our program, so work with other people who are learning this technology. So if you're not in a job and you don't have that real-world hands-on experience, like the actual you know, being paid in a job, you're kind of mimicking that experience by working with other people on some projects. Think about what types of business problems you might solve. And then you're going to learn some interpersonal skills. You're going to learn about working in teams, and you're going to learn about building technology to solve real-world problems. Showcase that somehow. Document it. Make sure that you can showcase that to employers. The last piece that I don't want you to miss is personal branding. So once you've got those hands-on skills, you've got some stiffications, you still need to get noticed online. Now, one of the best things you can do is have employers notice you rather than you just becoming another resume in a very busy inbox. So what I like to do is build up the online presence. That means make sure your LinkedIn profile looks really good. There's lots that we can do there to make sure we're telling a clear story about who we are and what kind of problems we can solve for businesses. So we want that to be squeaky clean. Make sure your certifications are on there. Make sure your projects are on there. What technologies you've worked with. Get endorsements. Get recommendations if you can as well. Talk about different projects that you've worked on in posts. Create articles. Talk about the project work and how you've been through a troubleshooting process. What you learned across your educational journey. And then network, get into the right networks of people on LinkedIn, be in the right groups, have the right connections, make sure you're connecting with recruiters, hiring managers and professionals in the field. When people see that you're active and they recognize you, your job search is gonna get a lot easier. So that is essentially the formula that we use, stiffications plus experience plus your online brand. If you focus on those three areas and make sure that you're well-rounded, then you're going to have a much better chance of moving into this industry with a great salary.
If you're interested in learning directly from me and my team in the Cloud Mastery Bootcamp, check the link in the description of this video.